friends! Welcome back to our week of celebrating Black Scientists. I am so excited. We've had a great time all week. We started off celebrating George Washington Carver, the father of agriculture. We have this fun little light up. We're getting a great collection here. Um, and we, we celebrated Mae Jemison yesterday, who was an astronaut who spent 80 days in space. And today we are celebrating Jewel Plummer Cobb, and she has done some amazing stuff. It really hits home to me, so we'll talk about what she's done. I'm really excited about it. Um, I'm gonna go over the supplies that you need to do this in a second, and then also we'll get to our shout outs. And I just wanna say this is a great way to start the conversation. If you haven't heard about what's going on in the world with protests, you can ask your parents. You guys can have a great conversation about what is going on and why that's important. All right, so today you will need some copper tape. You will need a battery and an LED. You could use more than one LED if you want to, that's totally fine. You need some non-conductive tape, so I have scotch tape, but you could use like a paper tape like masking or washi tape. You're gonna need some scissors, and then of course you need our fantastic printout that has a little bit of a biography of Jewel Plummer Cobb with a photo and then a picture of some of the work that she did, which we'll learn about, because you might be like, what is going on in that picture? And we'll learn about the work that she did in just a minute after we get to our awesome shout outs. Who do we have with us today? All right, well, we gotta give props to Miss Callie, Hi, Callie! because she's been here in Zoom for like an hour Yay. and 15 minutes. And which I is think awesome. That's super cool. Callie, it's great to see you. Also, a note to parents that I always say, you've probably heard it a bunch of times, but if you're new and you don't want your kids on YouTube, you can always go over into our Zoom classroom so you can have live interaction and you don't have to worry about people being on YouTube and meandering their way somewhere else. We also have, we're going to go in order. Fantastic. We got Miss Kaya. Hello, Kaya. Kaya made Kaya. You made it work yesterday on your own. I'm so proud of you. Good work. Yeah, you guys become. She got it working. Own. It was like kind of working when we left Zoom. It was flickering, and then she got it. She figured out how to make it even better. Can we coin the term happy. hashtag Circuit Superstar? Circuit Superstar. Circuit Superstar. That's all of you guys. We got George and Henry. In Hello, the house. George and Henry. It's great to see you boys again. Yay! And we got Miss Vinatia! Hello, Vinatia! I heard that if you could cure any disease, it would be coronavirus, and I'm pretty sure everybody in the world right now would completely agree with you. Totally. We all want that. I'm ready out. for coronavirus. That would be great. <laughs> uh, Abel says hi. Hello, Abel! I hope that you figured out redoing it. I think redoing it made it work for Abel yesterday. Yeah, he got it. He, he got, got it working. working. Yeah. yeah, good job, Abel. Abel, right. like, he really perseveres. Abel, I'm super proud that you keep trying, and you really persevere even when the times get tough. That's a really important trait to have, so that's awesome. And I just saw her disappear in Zoom, so we're going to hold off on Miss Naomi. Okay. But next up after that, we got mm -hmm. Rohan. Hello, Rohan. It's great to see you. I know you were here yesterday, but I don't think I saw you in Zoom. Huh. Mm -hmm. Well, we got one of our buddies, John, in Hello, the house. Hello, John. I'm glad you're joining us this week. And there's Naomi. Hi, Naomi. Hello, Naomi. I'm glad that you're with us today, also in Zoom. All right, so that's what we got for shout And Lila and Millie. And Lila and Millie. Hello, Lila and Millie. We know you're there. Shout out to you guys, too. And Lila had this great idea with Mae Jeminson. She put her stuff from Mae onto her solar system paper circuit that we made, like, weeks ago. It was super cool. She had, like, a rocket, and Mae was on the rocket. It was really neat. So, very cool, because you guys don't have to leave them like this. You guys can be creative and make your own art with them, which I think is really important. Totally. All right, so let's learn about Jewel Plummer Cobb. So, Jewel Plummer Cobb was born in the 1920s, and her dad actually was the first black man to get a doctorate from um, Cornell University, but, like, not a doctorate of, like, science, like a doctorate of, like, humans, like a doctor doctorate like a MD. not the doctor that I am I'm not the doctor that helps you he was the doctor that helps you um and her grandfather was actually a freed slave which is kind of crazy to think about because she recently passed away a couple of years ago and there are people alive today whose grandparents were slaves so it might feel like slavery was really really long time ago it's so far in the past but there's actually people walking this earth who well there are people walking this earth in other countries who are slaves and there are people walking the earth in this country whose grandparents were slaves. So it's actually not very far removed. 
Um, but her grandpa was a freed slave, and he actually went to Howard University and got educated there and became a pharmacist. So she sort of had this, like, blood in her veins of medicine. I mean, I feel like she was just born into medicine because her grandpa and her dad did a really good job. They really, like, learned about drugs for her grandpa and then how the body works for her dad. And it's very interesting because she actually brought the two together. Um, she grew up in the Jim Crow era of segregation. And if you don't know what segregation is, that's basically saying the color of your skin sort of determined if you could drink at a water fountain or check out a book at the library or go play at a playground. And that was all determined by the color of your skin. So she grew up during that. And so she went to a segregated high school. It didn't have as much funding. But in high school, she did get to look through a microscope for the first time, and she saw some cells in the microscope, and she was so excited about this that it literally changed her life. It drove her to, to do what she did, which is amazing because what she did we still use today, and it still saves lives today, which we're going to get to. I'm like keeping you guys in suspense because what she did is so amazing. Um, so she got really inspired in high school. She went to the University of Michigan to start her studies and then realized, hmm, they're not treating me so well because of the color of my skin up here and I really don't like it because they wouldn't let her do anything. They wouldn't let her join any clubs and she just didn't feel like she could do what she wanted to do. So she actually went down to Talladega, I think it's in Alabama, um, to finish her degree and she got a degree there and she took that degree and tried to go to NYU and they said, yeah, you're great. And then kind of like before, they were like, oh wait, you're black, you're not so great. And she was like, uh-uh, this is not happening. She marched herself down to NYU, got an appointment, in-person interview, got her spot back, which I'm like, oh my goodness, you go girl. Like I am, she really paved the way for so many minorities and specifically minority women to go into science and really proved that everybody's brains are just as good and we can all think about really cool things. Um, so she actually got her master's and her PhD at NYU and during her time she started studying melanin and if you don't know what melanin is, that is actually what gives your skin its color. So people who are lighter skinned have less melanin, people who are darker skinned have more melanin and the way that I like to think about it is it's kind of like an umbrella in your cells. So It'd be like holding up a little umbrella and the darker your umbrella is, the darker your skin is. And she studied how melanin and the sun sort of correlate to skin damage. And actually the melanin that's in that little umbrella that's in your cells that determines your skin pigment actually is an umbrella over your DNA. So this is actually really important because you don't want the UV light from the sun to hit your DNA because it can sort of break it apart and tell it to do things that are not right. So instead of being like this great little cell, it turns into a zombie cell, which is also known as cancer, it refuses to die. So the more melanin you have actually, the less likely you are to get that damage. And she discovered that, and she also discovered these drugs called, I have to like look at the word, methotrexate, that we use today, and it's used to treat melanoma, which melanoma is a skin cancer. And it's still used today, it treats skin cancer, it treats childhood leukemia, and it treats lung cancer. And that's really close to my home because my dad actually died of ocular melanoma, so skin cancer kind of in the eyeballs. Um, and so she discovered treatments for that and we still use it today. So she is saving lives. She's been saving lives for 75 years. She's now passed away. She's still saving lives because what she did was so cutting edge that we haven't necessarily found something to replace it. Like we definitely haven't found something to replace it, but. I mean, there are other treatments now, but she's still like the go-to, which is really cool. So that was sort of her legacy in science, was discovering how this color of your skin and the melanin in your skin reacted with the sun's rays and caused skin cancer. But that wasn't her whole legacy. She has a massive legacy about supporting minorities in science. This was her sort of driving fire in life. And everywhere she went, she spoke up about how we need to treat everybody equally, how we need to make sure that we get minorities in science, how we need to support them. She would create programs specifically for minorities in science and minority women in science 
that would set them up with faculty tutors. She would got she got them like a whole new like five year pre med degree program that would help them go from their disadvantaged backgrounds into a university setting. And with that extra year, they went out and they went to some of the top medical schools in the country. So she really paved the way. And that's also really close to my heart because I am clearly a woman in science. <laughs> so I have clearly felt sort of some of the issues that go along and tug and pull at you with that. So I really appreciate that she was there to help make that easier for me. And hopefully I was there to make that easier for all of my girls out there who are watching today. Um, and she also became the first African-American woman at Cal State in Fullerton. And she was the president, not the first one, at, she was the first president. So she led the entire college. And when she did that, yet again, she brought her legacy and she was like, we need satellite campuses so we can reach into these disadvantages communities. We need better dorming, we need better support services. And that truly was her legacy. When she was really remembered, she did all of this stuff with skin cancer and she found this treatment for it, which is amazing. And that is not to be overshadowed, but what she did for minorities in science was really like top notch. I mean, there's no, there's not even a word that you can put it to because she really did it. So that is why we are celebrating Miss Jewel Palmer Cobb today. So what we have on our fun little paper circuit is actually two, a couple of images. One of them, these blue cells are actually cancerous skin cells. So these are zombie cells that we would like to kill because if we don't kill them, they will kill us. So that is all of these little blue cells with like the really dark blue. These ones over here are probably healthier, but these guys down here, these are skin cancerous skin cells. And then this crazy looking formula right here, that is actually what methodextrate looks like if a chemist was to draw it out. So this is what the methodextrate molecule looks like. So this is the treatment that she made for the skin cancer that she studied. And today we are gonna light it up. I am gonna light it up with a red LED because for some reason I think red as lasers and I wanna zap those cancerous skin cells away so that they can't hurt us, all right? And we are gonna do that with our paper circuit. I'm gonna bring my Curious George out here and get started. Hey, Dr. Erica. Yes. Maybe you could say hi to Raiden one. Hi, Raiden! Oh, I'm so glad you joined us. And also, can you tell us what cancer is? Yes, so cancer sort of on the base level is when our skin cells refuse to die. So our cells right now, they go through a process where when they notice that they're injured, like they might have a virus in them. So maybe they have coronavirus or maybe they got damaged by the sun or um, maybe they got hurt some other way. And the cell, remember when we studied the cell, there was that nucleus, the nucleoli inside the cell that was like our brain. That does a lot of stuff and it sort of is like, hey, something's not right here. We've got all these extra molecules that are telling us something's wrong. We need to shut it down and a healthy cell will do that. It'll be like, that's it. We're done, folks. Something's wrong. We can't fix it. Let's die. And then another cell takes its place and we shed dead cells all the time. So that's not a problem. I mean, you shed a lot of dead cells without knowing about it and it doesn't hurt. The problem is is when the cell gets all those signals of like, you're hurt, you need to do something, we need to die, you need to shed, and then it doesn't. And I call those zombie cells because they're sort of like, they should be dead, but they're not. But they're pretty much dead, but they're still not. And the problem with those is because they're still not, they still divide. And then the dividing cells are also like zombie babies. And so you get all these zombie cells that are supposed to die and need to die, but can't. And that's what cancer is, is when you have a clump of those cells together. And it can, it can really mess with how our bodies do things. If you get too much of it, then our bodies can't overcome it and clear it out. Because we need to get dead things out of our body. It happens all the time. Again, it doesn't hurt you. But if you let it sort of build up and the things aren't dying like they're supposed to, it causes problems. Like in your lungs, you might not be able to breathe. In your eyes, you might not be able to see. In your bones, it might hurt your bones to walk. And that sort of just starts to create this really tough system that is hard to treat. Um, yeah. So we have a question from Naomi. Ooh, she great. said that she's wondering what the colors on the, the sheet mean. What color the are color. cells? Oh, what color these are good skin cells? Is there a great question? These cells are actually just stained. So they took the skin cell sample 
and stained all of them blue. So healthy cells are up here and you can look at it by how sort of dark their nuclei are, like this parts of the cells are. Skin cells themselves are whatever color your skin is, right? So the skin cells that you have on your body are, like mine are sort of this color, or in a freckle, they're that color. Um, and they don't, they don't really have a color under a microscope. They would look very clear or maybe sort of a translucent brown but we stain them to be able to see things and that stain attaches to certain things in the cell. So your skin cells are not actually blue. We just stained it blue. And if you have a black and white sheet because you didn't print it. Oh yeah, then you just have a black and white cell. That's okay. That's totally fine. Yeah, not a problem. All right. So for paper circuits, my friends who have done this all week, you guys can get started on it. If you question. Yes. Callie would like a call out for her sister. Hello, Carver. It's awesome to see you. Also, I think it's really cool that you are named after George Washington Carver. That's pretty cool history. Um, all right, so if you are ready, you can get started. If you are new to paper circuits, I want to teach you a few tricks. So the first trick, and I have my own piece of copper tape for this today, is when you peel the copper tape, you got to get your nail under there and then you'll make like a little T like this. And once it's like this, we want to stick it down to the paper because if we just pull it like this, it becomes totally unusable. It goes into a ringlet and then you've got to do all this stuff to get it to like flatten out if you can. Sometimes you rip it, it gets not sticky. It's just you don't want to deal with that. So whenever you use copper tape, you want to peel it and stick it down pretty immediately. I like to sort of measure out by going along the lines what you need and I give myself a little extra every time, just in case. And I'm going to do this top line first and when I come to the bend I can't rip it because I need my electrons to be able to travel on this highway and if I rip it then I'll have two highways sort of at different levels and they can't really get from one level to the other. So we need it all to be the same level highway. So I'm going to get it started like that, it's got a little T. I'm going to stick it down onto this top black line, it's like yellow line outlined by black. And the outline by black just tells me it's going to go underneath my battery. I'm going to stick it down all along this line. When I get here, again, I don't want to rip it because then I'll have two levels of copper tape. I want just the same piece of copper tape. So what you can do is you can give yourself a little bit extra and then you just sort of plop it down where you want later down in the line. And then this part you just press up and it makes a beautiful fold for you. And then when you get into the circle, this green circle, or if you're Naomi and you don't have the colors, the gray circle, you're going to cut it, the copper tape. Now you don't want your copper tape to go past that green circle. You need to make sure it hits at least the center. You don't want it to come in and just like stop like right there. Because that's going to be what contacts the bottom of our battery and we need some good contact there. All right, and you can press it down with your thumbnail or your fingernail to make it nice and flat, which is fine. And then we're going to do this other one, which is kind of looks like an S or maybe a number two. So again, I'm going to peel it. And once I've got it started, I'm going to stick it right down on the paper, just like that. I do need to make sure these two pieces of tape don't touch each other. That's no good because then we won't have a nice circuit like we want. So then at this corner again, I'm going to give myself a little bit extra like this and I'm just going to take a piece of tape and pop it down right where I want it and it makes that bend for me and then I can just press that down and as long as these two lines aren't touching, I am good to go. I'm going to do the same thing here. So I'm going to give myself a little bit extra right there. I'm just going to tape it down where I want it to go just like this. And then I'll just press down that piece. And it's okay if it's a little sticky. I'm going to come over to here and I'm going to tape it down. And this one's okay if it goes too long. You don't want it to really go too short, but too long is fine on that one. And I'm going to press it down with my thumb. Beautiful. I'm all wired up, friends. Now we need to add in our light and our power. So the battery is our power. And if you're new, there are four ways to hook up an LED to a battery, but only one way to make it work. So one of the ways is I put both the top, uh, both legs on the top of the battery. And this doesn't work because I need to go through a circuit from the top of the battery through the LED to the bottom of the battery. So here I don't have anything on the bottom. Same thing if I put both legs on the bottom, it doesn't work. I could put one leg on the top and one leg on the bottom, 
And this time I put the short leg on the top. So if you look at your LED, there's actually a leg that's a little bit longer than the other one and a one that's shorter. If I put the short leg on the top and the long leg on the bottom, that doesn't work. But if I put the long leg on the top and the short leg on the bottom, it does work. And you wanna make sure you can light up your LED before you add it into your circuit. Because two things could happen. One, your battery could be run out and doesn't have the power to light up the LED. Or your LED could be burnt out and no matter what your battery is doing, it can't get through the LED. So this tells me that both my battery and my LED are okay. And when I'm talking about the top, I'm talking about the top piece that has the letters on it. All right. So I'm going to take my battery and I'm going to tape it in. I'm going to put it right on top of this green or I guess if you're black and white gray circle. I do need to make sure that when I fold this piece up, it can touch the top of the battery. So when I tape it, I don't want to tape over the entire top of the battery. I just want to tape over a little bit to hold it in place. So I just like to take a little piece of tape here and you can just add it part way on the top, just a little bit like that, that's hanging. And then you can just tape it in going up like that. And so now my battery is very handily held in place for me. All right. And my switch of when I want to turn this on, I'm actually going to doggy ear fold the whole piece of the paper, not just the tape, just the whole piece. I'm going to fold it all the way up like a doggy ear in a book like that. And that'll be my switch when I press on this, it will be on. But of course I can't turn anything on if I don't have an LED. So remember I have two lengths of legs. I have a short leg and a long leg and the short leg goes on top and the long leg goes on bottom. And I like to really align them to go along the copper tape pieces instead of directly across. So you can do that by just bending it up and then spreading the legs a little bit like that. And you'll notice that mine's already touching. So my LED is already on, which is great. That tells me it's working. And I can take some tape and I can tape this over the top. So I want to tape the LED legs in and make sure that each LED leg is touching the metal of that copper tape. All right. You can't touch just the paper. You got to touch that copper tape and you can press it in so I can turn it off or I can turn it on, which is kind of cool. And this is for me, my little laser that I'm going to zap these cells with. Jewel Plumber Cobb used the methodex, uh, methotrexate to do that, to kill these cells that were not dying, but I'm gonna think I'm gonna use a laser because I kind of like that. All right, and then once we have it lit up, what we can do is we can do the same thing we've done with our other um, scientists that we're celebrating and we can cut them out. So we can sort of cut around them and bend them up so you have this really cool showcase of all of our fantastic scientists that we're celebrating this week. So I could cut right around her picture like this and I can now fold it up so that you guys can see her when she's standing on the piece of paper like this. And then if you want to create a stand, what you can do is you can cut just right along these letters and not all the way down, just right along even to where just the letters end like this. And we can bend this piece up here and you can tape it to the back of her portrait. And that way it'll stay up easier. So you can just tape that to the back and now she is staying up. And then our other ones, we have these great things that have these perfect outlines like a rocket ship or the peanut plants. And today is a little trickier because we don't necessarily have something you can cut around, but you could make it, you could cut around it however you want. You know, you can make it 3D by just cutting out some of them. Like little, like... Some of the cells. Some of the cells. Yeah. Oh, I like this idea. All right, we're going to try something a little different. Evan's got this idea of cutting out just some cells. So let's try this. We'll see what we can do. Like just like single, little tiny cells like this. Single cells and stand them up. So we could cut out single cells. That's kind of a really cool idea that Evan has. We're gonna go for it. And I'm gonna just cut around some of these cells. I'm gonna cut around the tops of them so that when I fold them up, I can see the cell part. I know this is hard for you guys to see right now just because. You might cut like a long strand one. Mm. Maybe I'll cut a long strand around her, her drug that mm. she found. That is saving lives still today. So if 
you know somebody who had childhood leukemia or has childhood leukemia right now, they might be benefiting from her work. All right, I'm gonna cut this guy out like this. I like that so I can fold up her, the drug she discovered. I've got some cells here. Abel and Penelope and John have already finished. Cool. What? You guys are amazing. All right, I'm gonna keep cutting just a little bit more. Just a couple more cells here. Just this like cluster, I think. And then I'm gonna, there we go. I'm just gonna do that guy. That will come up like that. So this is a cool way to make this one. And now I have all these slices over here. So I'm just gonna take a piece of tape and tape these guys back together like that. And I don't even think I need anything to hold up this stuff. And I might put a piece of tape over here where I cut between things like that. I'll have to fold that under. So now I have this awesome little tribute to Jewel Plummer Cobb and the work that she did to teach us about not only how skin damage happens, how we can treat skin damage, but also how we can treat people of all different backgrounds and colors and genders equally in science and math, which I think is amazing. So that is who we are doing today. I think tomorrow we're doing Emmett Chappelle. Mm. And then on our last day, we are doing Marie Maynard Daily. So I'm very excited about our last two days of celebrating black scientists in our week to support Black Lives Matter and what is going on in our world. We won't be here next week or the week after, I believe, but we are gonna try to maybe bring back sort of all these paper circuits in different fun ways for us to do throughout the summer for you guys. All right, I'm gonna pop over to my Zoom classroom. So if you need help or you just wanna share your project, we'll be over in Zoom in just a minute and say goodbye to our YouTube friends. If you want access to our Zoom classroom, you can always get it at patreon.com slash rosyresearch and we hope to see you there. Goodbye, my friends. Have a great afternoon.